Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we want to talk about embedded macros. All the places that you can put a macro in a button in an, any sort of event, many times you want to put it in the form in, on the event itself rather than creating separate macros that are referenced by those events. So let's take a look. Today I'm going to take you through a database that I built for a client. This particular database dealt with a lot of data and the data came from a hierarchical database that didn't have good visibility as to what was really going on with the data and it really didn't have good editing capabilities either. So the, the simple solution for me with, with the desktop tools I had available was to download the data, put it into Access, and let Access make the decisions and find the anomalies and, and then export data to correct those anomalies. So I want to show you what I did because most of what I did in this database were embedded macros, and I'll show you how that worked. So here is the main menu. You can see it's quite busy. There are numbered steps all the way through this macro, and I generally put the instructions over here. Now, this the data is from Oracle's data management tool. I put usually the instructions over here as to how to operate the database. That's just kind of a norm that I set. So I've got kind of self-documentation within the application. But the one I want to show you in particular is this particular button here. Now, you'll notice that it runs pretty quick. In fact, I'll run it, and that's how quick this whole thing runs. You might be surprised to see how much work just got done in that little bit of time. So it is an embedded macro. So what's an embedded macro? Well, we know what macros are from my previous videos. I'm going to rely on you to go look at those if you need to know what a macro is. But an embedded macro is a macro that is within a form or within a report so that it runs when the form is brought up and it's only available under the particular event that you have it attached to. So you'll notice that this is a button here and I put the embedded macro on the on click event of that particular button. Now, of course, the button has a lot of different other events that can happen to it. But when the user clicks that button is when I want the macro to execute. You both create and edit the macro by clicking this ellipse on the right hand side. Now, here is, here is the macro that ran in that little bit of uh, a couple seconds. It ran queries, it exported data, it imported data, and you can see all the operations that it ran. Now the nice thing with a large macro like this when you want to go look through it to edit it is it has these couple buttons up here where you can expand the whole macro like that or you can collapse it when you're done. Collapse everything. It's nice in the respect that I like to collapse it when I'm done and then I save it simply because I can quickly view the main commands and actually even in this open query it tells me all the data right on this line without being expanded. It says that it's going to open a query. The query is going to be named this and it's going to open it in datasheet view and it's going to open it for edit. Well that happens to be an action query so really it won't open it in a data sheet and it won't actually open to edit the data but those are default settings with every open query. So when I open it all here we can see. Notice I set warnings at the beginning and way at the bottom. I set warnings back on so that I can make sure the user isn't beset with every single one of those action queries. We're going to update this number of records, then we're going to delete this number of records, and having to respond to every one of those boxes for every single one of those queries could get pretty obnoxious. So I turn off the set warnings. The next thing is that I open this query where it's going to purge a particular table, make sure a table is purged that I want to load data into, and then I'm going to run this query, okay? Make sure that everything is, is set and ready to go. Then I am going to export data to it, okay? Now, 
understand that off of my main menu, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and close this for a second. Off my main menu, they've already loaded the data. So the action query already has data to work with. So it's, it's doing its number with the data that's already set and ready to go. So when we go back to the macro here, it's going to purge the export and then it's going to reload that export table here. Then it's going to export that data to a data file that I could then use to put back into the data manager. It will look for anomalies in that data. Actually, it's looking for uh, for records that aren't in the right place and it makes it sure it moves it to the right place and on. Now, I repeat this same kind of thing over and over and over again. So you see that basically you see the same pattern. I'm going to open query, purge and export. I'm going to create a new export. Then I'm going to run the saved export. So what each of these exports did is to export some data into the a common place that every user has. So I could distribute this data to several other users and they would be able to find all of this exported data in the same, uh, in the same place. So I'm going to pull that over to the screen here. What it is, is local disk users public and under, under public documents. That place is common for every user that uses Windows. And of course, it was common within the company to find them all there. Now, you saw the query run, and this is all the data that it created. And you can see that those are ready to go to be used and put into the other database and run them. Now, these are all zero size, meaning that I don't have the data loaded into the database right now. So that might have been a contributor to how quickly it ran. But in any case, it creates these exports and the users would then use those exports. So that is what an embedded macro is. Literally, it's just a macro that you create and use within a form or report setting. And you can put it under buttons. You can put it on the on open. Like, for example, you can put it on the property sheet of the form on any of the these events. And the form has a lot of different events. OK, I could put it on on load. And there's a lot of occasions where I need to set up data for a particular form. So I'll have a macro that will run on load and do all the data preparations for the form and then move move forward. So after updating the form, after before updating the form, all different kinds of events that you can use a macro on. So we'll talk a lot more about events in a later video. But uh, suffice it to say at this point that when you have a macro that needs to be captive inside a form or report, you use an embedded macro. So if you got some value out of this video, please hit that like button. Let's get it out to some others. I'd love you to join the party by subscribing and uh, hope to see you again in another video. Thanks.